Uh, dear committee, dear uh, colleagues, uh, I'm Adrian Kovács. I work at the Department of uh, Internal Medicine and Hematology, and I'm going to present the last two years' uh, uh, achievements of my PhD project, Ketosis Prone uh, Type 2 Diabetes. Uh, this type of diabetes is characterized by unprovoked uh, ketoacidosis onset with preserved uh, insulin secretion and the lack of uh, diabetes-related uh, autoantibodies. Uh, although these uh, patients uh, need uh, multiplied daily insulin injections uh, after uh, the diagnosis, uh, we have uh, data that uh, in a significant number of these patients, uh, uh, this uh, multiply uh, regimen uh, can be reduced to once daily insulin uh, therapy uh, or uh, a totally insulin free um, regimen. Um, so, uh, with this uh, PhD topic, uh, I would like to uh, increase awareness about this special type of diabetes. Uh, and uh, my vision is that um, uh, if we can uh, uh, more precisely uh, uh, recognize and diagnose these patients, then we will be able to provide better long-term treatment uh, and better uh, life quality. Uh, I have two projects. The first one uh, is investigating the prevalence and the clinical characteristics of ketosis prone type 2 diabetes and the second one is a, a follow-up study of Hungarian patients uh, with this type of diabetes. Uh, let me start with the first project which, which was a meta-analysis. Um, so just a few background information uh, on this uh, condition. Um, uh, this, uh, um, so ketosis prone type 2 diabetes belongs to the uh, hybrid form uh, of diabetes uh, according to the latest uh, classification uh, by the WHO in 2019. Uh, and it resembles both the characteristics of type 1 and type 2 diabetes, that's why we call it a, a hybrid form. Um, the major question in uh, our clinical setting is to decide whether a new onset diabetic ketoacidosis is caused by type 1 uh, uh, diabetes or ketosis prone type 2 diabetes. Uh, since it's not well uh, characterized, uh, the, uh, our meta-analysis uh, uh, assessed uh, the, the prevalence and the clinical characteristics uh, of the ketosis prone type 2 diabetes. Um, uh, so the question uh, incorporated um, these two um, uh, factors. We use these uh, fame verses as you can uh, see here. Um, and uh, we conducted the systematic search uh, from almost 17,000 uh, articles. Finally, we were able to use 11 articles, 11 studies for uh, the meta-analysis. Uh, here you can see our major uh, results. This first uh, forest plot uh, shows that uh, uh, about one third of new onset diabetic ketoacidosis uh, were caused by ketosis prone type 2 diabetes. And about the clinical phenotype of the patients, uh, we concluded that uh, these patients uh, are uh, older uh, and they have a higher uh, BMI compared to type 1 diabetes, uh, which as I mentioned was our major uh, um, interest to make a differentiation between these two types of diabetes. Uh, in conclusion, uh, we found that uh, it is a common type of diabetes uh, among uh, uh, newly diagnosed patients with diabetic ketoacidosis. And um, uh, the clinicians uh, can identify uh, them based on their uh, older age and uh, the higher uh, BMI. The implication for the practice is that uh, in every new uh, onset diabetic ketoacidosis case, uh, we should use the uh, C-peptide and the auto <coughs> diabetes-related autoantibody measurements to better identify these patients and to uh, provide them a, a proper long-term treatment. Uh, we submitted the, uh, the manuscript uh, in April uh, and it was under review um, um, since Monday when we got the uh, reply that after revision they are ready uh, uh, to accept it. Um, the second uh, project 
uh, is a, a cohort analysis of Hungarian patients with new onset diabetes and diabetic ketoacidosis. Um, uh, I have to tell you that there is very limited data available uh, on the prevalence of uh, ketosis prone type 2 diabetes uh, in the Caucasian uh, ethnicity. Uh, it mainly affects uh, patients of uh, Asian, Asian and um, uh, Hispanic uh, ancestry. And our uh, center will be the first to present data on this uh, uh, clinical entity in Hungary. We had uh, two aims. The first one is to describe the prevalence uh, in the Hungarian population um, and uh, to compare uh, the clinical phenotype to type 1 uh, and non-ketotic type 2 diabetes. Here you can see the study design. Uh, we were able to uh, identify uh, 22 patients uh, with ketosis prone type 2 diabetes. Um, uh, based on uh, autoantibody and C-peptide measurement. And uh, this first uh, figure uh, tells us the uh, age uh, distribution uh, among the different uh, types of diabetes. Uh, I would like to, uh, this is a violin plot uh, and uh, it uh, offers a box plot and a histogram uh, combined. I would like to highlight that uh, ketosis prone type 2 diabetes patients were older uh, compared to uh, type 1 diabetes patients. Um, on BMI, uh, here you can see the BMI adjusted for uh, age and sex. Uh, and the figure uh, shows us marginal means with, uh, uh, conf with the 95% confidence interval uh, and uh, the arrows uh, are showing us the significant, uh, significance level uh, uh, and if they are not overlapping we can conclude that there is a significant difference uh, between the types. And uh, the main focus is that, again, ketosis prone type 2 diabetes patients uh, uh, were more obese uh, than the type 1 uh, patients. Uh, these findings uh, are in accordance with the uh, previous findings from our meta-analysis. On the genetic background, we assessed the uh, type 1 diabetes susceptibility uh, alleles in ketosis prone uh, type 2 and type 1 diabetes patients uh, and we uh, saw that uh, the middle and high risk uh, alleles uh, uh, were significantly more frequent in type 1 diabetes. Uh, so uh, ketosis prone type 2 patients uh, lack uh, the same genetic uh, background. Uh, on the other hand, uh, uh, you can see that um, the type 2 diabetes uh, related uh, uh, variant of the transcription factor TCF7L2. Uh, uh, if we analyzed uh, this uh, uh, gene variant, we, we found no uh, significant difference between type 2 diabetes and ketosis prone type 2 uh, diabetes. Um, when we um, analyzed the long-term uh, uh, C-peptide levels of the patients, uh, we saw that even after decades, uh, their C-peptide, which uh, indicates uh, the endogenous insulin secretion, it remained uh, in the reference uh, range. Um, so, um, all in all, uh, we can report that this type of diabetes uh, affects the Caucasian uh, uh, population. These patients uh, have, uh, on average, a higher age and BMI compared to type 1 diabetes. That's how we can uh, um, differentiate them from type 1 diabetes. And uh, they have a different genetic background. Um, we also showed that beta cell function remains sufficient over a long period of time, and uh, uh, this can prove that these patients can be treated uh, uh, without uh, insulin or with one basal uh, insulin. Um, the implication for the practice, uh, again, that uh, all new onset diabetes with ketoacidosis should be diagnosed based on C-peptide and uh, diabetes-related autoantibody measurement, uh, and this should be uh, incorporated into the uh, uh, international classification systems. 
Um, the first draft of this uh, manuscript uh, was finished in early June. Uh, and uh, I had the pleasure to present my uh, uh, results uh, at the latest uh, European Association, Diabetes Association Congress in uh, Stockholm. Uh, it was, uh, I believe it was a success and I cannot be thankful enough uh, for the support of my supervisor, uh, Nora Hosufalushi, and to all of my colleagues uh, at the Center for Translational Medicine. Thank you for your attention. May I start one question? Um, that um, uh, you mentioned that uh, it's older people will answer, and um, it's about uh, 50 years old. Yes, that's the yes. Yes. So, what could be the explanation for this? Maybe the explanation that uh, uh, beta cell uh, insulin resistance will be increased so much that it's no effect at all of the insulin, and that's the explanation because somehow it's a missing insulin effect, mm -hmm. and um, and how how the organism is able to overcome about this. And uh, because then the uh, insulin production will be normal again, or, or almost normal with, with uh, medicines, and uh, it's able to prevent the ketoacidosis. So could you tell me something about the pathomechanism? Uh, yes, uh, so they are older than the type 1 patients. Uh, yeah. But uh, uh, yes, they are um, on average in their uh, 30s and 40s at the time of the diagnosis. Uh, and uh, one explanation can be that they, these uh, two types of diabetes uh, uh, have completely different uh, pathophysiological background. Uh, type 1 is, as we know, the autoimmune uh, background. Mm -hmm. uh, and there is, when it is diagnosed, uh, there is no uh, uh, endogenous insulin secretion. Uh, on the other hand, ketosis prone type 2 diabetes patients um, uh, have a normal uh, C-peptide level indicating a normal uh, insulin secretion. Uh, however, as you mentioned, the uh, action of insulin is uh, altered. Uh, there are many theories uh, for this. Uh, the, the most important ones uh, uh, are discussing the, um, that there is uh, some kind of uh, deterioration in the uh, amino acid metabolism. Uh, and uh, so they uh, uh, cannot um, actually uh, the degradation of uh, branch chain amino acids uh, are uh, fastened and uh, this uh, is a pro-catogenic uh, uh, mechanism. And uh, another thing is that uh, uh, arginine uh, uh, availability is not uh, efficient uh, in the uh, uh, cytoplasma, uh, which is uh, an important factor for insulin secretion. Okay. Because I, uh, first when I read this abstract, I wanted to ask uh, whether is it uh, can be weighted that even in the uh, pediatric population will increase uh, this kind of um, diabetes, but you proved me that this is not probable because uh, it's a uh, uh, start even later than the type yes. 2. Because type 2 diabetes uh, start to increase in, in, in the uh, pediatric population also. Yes, but year. I would like to uh, add some facts that uh, with the growing evidence of obesity, uh, now we can we have uh, literature data that it is uh, indeed present in the uh, childhood uh, or in the in children also, uh, and um, so it. Uh, the, the pathophysical background is not yet well understood, uh, but uh, we think that uh, in the center, so um, in addition to the, the altered amino acid and fatty acid mechanisms, uh, insulin action in the liver is affected also. So it is related to obesity, as we saw these patients are obese, uh, and there are reports on, on child, children okay. also with this type of diabetes. What, what we present, or what I presented here, is, uh, is an overall effect. Overall. Thank you very much. Anybody? 
Congratulations. It was a quite new information for me that it's a distinct form of diabetes. What do you think? Is it closer to type 1 or type 2 diabetes regarding the complications, the prognosis of the diabetes? Is there any data because it's a new form of diabetes? Yes, yes, that's why we call it a hybrid form. Uh, at the onset, uh, it, uh, it is like type 1 diabetes because by definition it is uh, diagnosed with diabetic ketoacidosis. But after uh, this acute phase, it uh, totally resembles uh, type 2 diabetes uh, uh, phenotype. Uh, and this is the clue in the clinical practice to identify them that they, even though they have uh, uh, ketoacidosis, they are more obese and usually, uh, usually uh, they are older than type 1 diabetes. And the natural disease course uh, is much more similar to type, 1 di type 2 diabetes. Thank you. Question? Yes, please. Uh, could we uh, go back to the forest plots, please? Mm -hmm. Uh, so you mentioned that you have like uh, 11 articles altogether that you could include in your first study. Uh, where do these data come from? So are they like, uh, because here you want to find a prevalence. Are they like uh, population or hospital based or some sampling? So what do these data, these numbers represent? Uh, yes, so this prevalence uh, tells us that among new onset diabetic ketoacidosis, this was the percentage of uh, ketosis prone type 2 diabetes. So the population we investigated uh, was uh, uh, hospital admitted uh, patients with diabetic uh, ketoacidosis. So each of the articles? Each of the in, articles, in exactly. Okay. And uh, can we just progress oh. a little? Oh, sorry. Forward. Yes. Oh, did you have any explanation for this heterogeneity here? Because we see uh, from around uh, uh, zero up to uh, 30 with these uh, values. Can you have any explanation for that? And how did you address this heterogeneity in your data? Um, yes, um, so we found that uh, if uh, the article used a different diabetes classification scheme, that there were, then there were uh, uh, different uh, uh, outcomes. Um, so uh, the last two articles uh, included not only the new onset uh, population, but the previously uh, the diagnosed diabetes population also. And uh, there were um, also uh, differences on uh, how they um, um, used the, or, or uh, even they used the uh, autoantibody measurement or not. Uh, one type of uh, autoantibody auto or, or more. Um, so this was an explanation. Okay. Thank you very much. Congratulations. So uh, I, would, I would like to ask, uh, in your center, you are also measuring the C-peptide level. And, uh, how, how is about in, in Hungary, in other centers, in other hospitals? Do they usually also uh, observe it or not? Do you know anything about it? Um, uh, yes, we are in a lucky uh, position uh, at the university as uh, we have the chance to measure uh, autoantibodies. I think that all the other peripheral centers should measure it and make the diagnosis based on it. However, in uh, uh, the current uh, Hungarian uh, practice, uh, this kind of measurement is not widely available in the Neither in the university centers. centers? Sorry? Not in the university centers? Uh, in the university centers, it, it is available, or these kind of measurements are available. Uh, and uh, even our uh, center uh, serves as a uh, national uh, diabetes uh, classification center. So uh, we take uh, uh, samples from, uh, from um, um, uh, peripheral um, mm -hmm. um, hospitals also, and we, or the university, uh, does the measurement for them also. 
I'm asking because uh, you want to somehow, uh, somehow uh, find the prevalence of this in, in Caucasian population, mm -hmm. but you are only one center. So yes. uh, did you start to discuss with uh, some other centers to just to, to make the, the population uh, uh, bigger? Uh, yes, so um, this is a major limitation of uh, this cohort analysis. It was a one center uh, study uh, and it is a retrospective uh, setting, uh, but the first uh, uh, aim uh, of uh, our team is to establish a registry and uh, for sure we need uh, much more centers to join this registry. Okay. Thank you. Congratulations. Um, maybe I just missed this information, but like, what, what was the conclusion um, regarding, you, you said, if I remember well, that uh, regarding uh, the meta-analysis, is this one uh, in, in three patients? Mm -hmm. And uh, what was the re result? So like it was similar in your case when you measured the cost, so like to so just compare these two. Um, uh, yes, um, so oh, yeah. f from the uh, ketosis positive cases, which was uh, 84, we identified 22 patients, so it's kind of the, the same mm -hmm. Okay, percentage. and the other studies um, uh, which you included in the meta-analysis, from which, which countries where mm -hmm. they come from? Uh, the, oh, I don't have a figure for this, but uh, they were basically from uh, Asian and uh, and uh, Asian populations and uh, Afro-American uh, patients from the uh, USA. Okay. Thank so you. no no Caucasian population was involved. Okay. Thank you. Question. No. Anybody else? No. Congratulations. Um, I have just my one question. Uh, are there any diseases, according to maybe the metabolic syndrome, there, there is a higher prevalence of uh, this ketone prone diabetes, for example, like the muffled disease of the liver or maybe, maybe other? So, if I understand correctly, if there uh, an evidence for uh, coexisting mafadin in this uh, type of yeah, type? Uh, yes, um, because it plays a role also in the keto metabolisms and as well, you know, like the diabetes to increase in this uh, patient. So. Uh, yes, uh, in this second study, um, uh, we um, did an analysis on hepatic steatosis index. We calculated uh, uh, HSI uh, of the patient. Uh, uh, I, I did not uh, include that figure because uh, it is based on the BMI. Um, so it kind of uh, showed us the same effect that uh, uh, this HSI uh, uh, index was higher, significantly higher in this uh, ketotic uh, uh, type uh, ketosis from type 2 diabetes patients compared to type 1 diabetes. Um, so there is um, an altered uh, um, 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 altered fat uh, um, yep. composition of their liver. I know you were not focused on this topic, but, but just wondering if you know this. 